Hello and welcome to a playthrough for Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, a few fair warnings, I am going to be using a couple of cheats, um, just some really basic ones uh, in this playthrough, because the whole point of this playthrough is about experiencing the story rather than the grind that this game unfortunately offers at times. The story is quite an interesting one. Um, this game often gets quite overlooked because the first half of the game is very, very linear. Like it was kind of poorly designed gameplay wise for the first half of the game. The second half of the game, however, is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? The cheats I'm going to be using um, are basically just easy leveling cheats and giving me 99 of like each item once I've found one of them. Um, I think that's about it really. Oh yeah, I'm just um, going to be invincible because who wants to be filming a video and then have to start all over again because you died? <laughs> The plan is to do each chapter of the game in one video, but that might, certainly for the later Thirteen chapters, days after we awoke, be a bit difficult. Or the beginning of the end. Serious? Be quiet. Best of luck. That <laughs> gets me every time I look well like that. Oh, I'm gonna have easy stagger on as well. I swear it would usually take quite a bit of effort to stagger some enemies. It's gonna be fairly easy for us. 
which will speed the battles up considerably, which is the point. We don't want to focus too much on the battles, we want to focus on the story. Hey, hey, hey! Let's be rational now! Oh, oh. Sending the big guns now. What do we do? Watch and learn. Oh, we're going to skip tutorials as well. Basically, what that tutorial was going to tell us is that we, we uh, have to wait for our little blue bar to fill up and then we get to either auto battle, so it'll pick what to do for us based on what we know about the enemies, um, or we can go into abilities or items and use, and use specific abilities or items. And I'm just going to auto battle for now because at the moment all we really need to know how to do is attack. Alright, so this is the uh, status screen for the enemies. This one's already filled everything out for us, which is quite nice. We would otherwise use a leap of scope, but notice I've got 99 of each other. Stars are rewarded mostly based on how quickly you take them out, and it will give you hopefully better, or you've got a stronger chance of be getting better items depending on your stars. Still pretty slim chance of getting the rare items anyway. Which is a part of the problem with this game in the grind. Sometimes you can get to the end of a, a chapter and have to backtrack to the start to refight some enemies to get their particular loot that you will need later in the game. As the enemies in this game are confined to specific chapters, I mean, you, are you miss safe, stuff aren't you? really easily. What are you doing trying to stop the purge? Why don't you tell me that? I was a soldier. Hey, where do you think you're going? Hey. Chocobo, you just can't catch a break, can we? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh well, better follow up. I'm getting too old for this. So, you're probably wondering what on earth is going on. So, let's go have a look at our data log and find out. Lining and sales are held aboard a military purge train along with a group of civilians destined for exile. In stark contrast to the uncertain and despairing people around her, Lightning appears determined and focused. She seizes upon an instant of inattention to disable a guard, and her impressive display inspires Saz and the other civilians to take up arms against the soldiers. 
After clashing with army forces, the train crashed into a, uh, to a halt for the war-torn district known as Hanging Edge. Sars attempts to figure out Lightning's angle, but she shows little desire to share. The former soldier throws herself into battle without the slightest hint of hesitation. What could be driving her? Okay, so that's pretty much what we just saw happening. But, what we would like to know... Hasn't given us any information yet. Uh, what we'd like to know is where are we, what the hell's going on. Um, so, let me give you a very brief rundown. Basically, we're starting the first half of the game on Cocoon, which is a moon above the planet Grand Pulse. And everyone on Cocoon is terrified of Grand Pulse because of wars that occurred many, many, many millennia ago um, between the, the deities, the sort of almost godlike creatures um, called Falci. Um, there's Falci from Grand Pulse and Falci from Cocoon. And as far as all the citizens on Cocoon are concerned, the Falci from Pulse are evil and the Falci from Cocoon are the good guys that help them with their everyday lives by providing power and building things and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, all of these people are being deported to Grand Pulse, supposedly, although really all that's going to happen is they're all going to be, all going to be killed. But they're supposedly being deported to Grand Pulse because um, a Falci from um, Grand Pulse was found in the village that they were all in. Okay, so the people of Cocoon have acted with fear, the Falci of Cocoon have agreed with them and have decided to, you know, get rid of everyone that was anywhere near that, that Falci because the Falci can basically make human beings their slaves and they're worried that all of these people might be Lussi which means that you know they've become slaves of the Falci. Now that all sounds really confusing but you'll get it as it goes along because the storyline goes into it a lot. first few chapters are very, very linear, um, they're maps, I mean, and it's a bit of a put-off for most players. I'm just going to get rid of all of these. And then we will continue. Alright, enemy intel is where it's going to be important. You see that tick there? That means I've fought enough of them to have gained all of their intel. Now you'll see that every enemy has got a common drop and a rare drop. It's going to be very important that I get at least one of each of those items before I move on from an area. So if you see me backtracking at all in the future videos, which I hopefully won't have to do if I do everything perfectly, but if you do see me backtrack, that's why. so I'm going to override it. That was basically the first attempt at these videos where I didn't realise the sound was really bad. The mess is what this is. So this first chapter you will see it's very, very, very linear. Lots of boring battles, but there's a lot of very important storyline stuff going on, so I would recommend not to watch this video because you won't have the slightest clue what's going on in the rest of the game.
Exactly paradise. Domesticated peacekeepers. Nothing to worry about. Maybe not for a soldier girl, but I'm trying to say. Hey, hey, hey! hey! See, I don't know anything about this guy yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of my Libra scopes to find out. Oh, it's too late. Bother. It's really quite annoying. Thanks for that, Sans. We're under my face. I think I just missed the important bit. Down the bottom we would we just missed a bunch of people getting their answers worked by a great big Bethanoff. Still need to fight a lot of enforcers. I'm done with the wardens. Still need to fight a lot of aerial recon. And some pantherions, but we're gonna we're gonna come across plenty of them, so that's not a problem. Alright, 
so because I've used a Libra scope, it's given me the missing information for both. So Libra scope basically um, shows us for all of the uh, enemies, but it doesn't necessarily fill out their entire thing. There's no time. Then what do you suggest we do? Quiet. Hey! 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 Wait! Uh, no, 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 don't leave me! Uh, let go! The hell no! You're my only way out of here! No! Uh, 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 Get us across. Right there. Right? Looks that way. Suspect citizens of Cocoon are wrenched from their tranquil existence and threatened with exile to the world of Pulse. The purge has begun. The land below is said to crawl with unbeknown perils, and terif terrified civilians begin to rebel against the purge. A revolt also occurs on the train transporting purge deportees, as Lightning's battle against the guards galvanizes the other prisoners into action. The train comes to a halt in the district of Hanging Edge now a hellish war zone, where soldiers open fire indiscriminately upon civilians. Lightning makes her way through the middle of the conflict, all but ignoring her unin uninvited companion Saz. She seems determined to press onwards even when the path before her is destroyed by military strikes. You leave this to me.
you? You think I'm gonna go out there and just tell everybody your secrets? My anger. I'm after the foul sea. Heroes. Here. You keep your cool, and they will too. You got it? Got it. What's our motto? The army's no match for Nora. That a boy. Peaceful citizens of Cocoon live in constant fear of invasion by the forces of Pulse, the world below, and supposed at home to terrors unknown. Were even a single Pulsian agent to be discovered on Cocoon, panic and civil unrest would be sure to follow, threatening the very fabric of society. To prevent such a calamity, the Sanctum, Cocoon's governing body, initiates the Purge, a government initiative officially entailing the deportation of all those who have come into contact with corrupting Pulsian influences. However, the Sanctum army is now brutally slaughtering the civilians who were supposed to be deporting. Realising that the Purge is nothing more than a massacre in disguise, Snow leads the young freedom fighters of Nora in an effort to protect the Purge deportees from the Sanctum soldiers. Day 13 before the game. The Falci of Pulse Origin was discovered within a vestige on the outskirts of Bottom two days previously, having apparently spent centuries in hibernation with humans none the wiser to its presence. The Sanctum deemed the potential contamination by pulse magic a risk too great to overlook, and immediately enacted legislation permitting the purge and involuntary removal of the foul sea and the entire population of Bodom from Cocoon. Deportees were told only that they would be transported to Pulse. Pulse? Resting in Cocoon's shadow, the sprawling and enigmatic lower world of Pulse is home to a multitude of terrors. The land is commonly believed to be inhospitable to human life, and a strict ban on interworld travel forbids citizens of Cocoon from venturing there to challenge this hypothesis. Not even members of the Sanctum's upper echelon can claim to have seen the surface with their own eyes, but the attempted invasion by the world's savage armies several centuries ago is well documented. Widespread fear and a repeated assault but widespread fear of a repeated assault persists among the populace even today, 
with colloquial references often enlightening the world to a manner of living hell. Oh, I see that great big scar in Cocoon there? That was apparently caused in the battle between Pulse and Cocoon all that time ago. From her lofty seat, the world of Cocoon has long enjoyed tranquility. The interior of her spherical shell supports several spiralling cities and a population numbering in the tens of millions. Although a variety of dangerous beasts prowl the wilds, advanced technology and the protection and the protection of the world's foul sea keepers ensure residents a peaceful and prosperous existence. Travel to a lower world of Pulse is forbidden, but given their deep-seated cultural fears of the place, Cocoon citizens would not even think to venture beyond the paradise they know. The Hanging Edge, where we are. A relic of days before the, world, before the War of Transgression, the Hanging Edge is located near Cocoon's outer rim. The area was once a thriving urban centre, but residents were forced to abandon the location when attacked by Pulsian forces cracked Cocoon's shell during the conflict several centuries past. It was since designated a restricted zone, and with civilian access prohibited, soon became nothing more than a name on local maps. The Sanctum, Cocoon's governing central government. The Sanctum holds supreme executive, legislative, and judicial power. It also maintains direct authority over the military. Despite the fact that Cocoon was built by the Falci and not by humans, the Falci opt to participate only superficially in governmental affairs, leaving Cocoon's administration entirely at the discretion of the Human Sanctum and its Primarch Galanth Dias. The Purged. For millions who call Cocoon's home, the lower world of Pulse represents a constant source of fear. Suspected association with Pulse means stigmatization as an enemy and of the state and all mankind, even for born and raised citizens of Cocoon. The recent discovery of a falsy from Pulse near the city of Bodom causes widespread civil unrest. After placing the city's entire population under quarantine due to the possibility of contamination, the Sanctum then announced its intent to forcibly relocate the affected to Pulse in an emergency measure dubbed by authorities as the Purge. Nora, Parliament Pala military organisation known as Nora is a group composed of like-minded youths assembled, assembled by Snow and self-funded by the operation of a seaside cafe in Bodom. Functioning as a neighbourhood watch of sorts, Nora members patrol the vicinity of Bodom for trouble. Most often, trouble consists of encroachment by dangerous forms of wildlife. Nora had never openly acted out against the Sanctum prior to the purge, and because of this, the military had been content to turn a blind eye to the group's activities. Today, we're all in this together. Our enemies, the Cocoon Sanctum. The dreaded Psycom, no less. What's the dread? Psycom's nothing but a whole bunch of bluster and bullying. They've got nothing on Nora. Well, we are the heroes after all. <sighs> Let's prove it! Yeah! yeah. Sanctum's gonna pay for this. Ugh. 
no more. <sighs> there are soldiers everywhere. Yo, boss. What's the plan? Charge in, guns blazing. Hey, that's not a plan. Real heroes don't need plans. <laughs> Nonsense. Psycon, the Sanctum military is composed of two main branches, the Guardian Corps, responsible for maintaining security in various jurisdictions throughout Cocoon, and Psycom, the Public Security and Intelligence Command. Psycom is an elite special operations unit charged with protecting Cocoon from policy and incursion. In contrast to the lightly armed Guardian Corps, Psycom employs an array of advanced heavy weaponry and cruiser-class airships. As Psycom bears responsibility for any and all threats of Pulse Origin, it was Psycom who conducted the purge. Same plan as always. Hit him hard, and hit him again. <laughs> I managed to sneak up on them, I got the preemptive strike, meaning that all their stagger gauges start off as um, already staggered basically. Or close to staggered anyway. Which makes it much easier. Moving to Pulse today. We'll clear you a path out of here, so be ready Wait, to. Let me fight yeah, with you. You can't expect us to just sit here. <laughs> Could help. Yep. Please, let us help. Okay then. Volunteers front and center. Here, take this one. This, here you go. Then one for you. Count Go me for in. It. Here's yours. Take care now. Mom? <laughs> Don't worry. Huh? So I just Hold it yeah, here. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, uh, nice. Can you show me again? Uh, you got That's it. how it works. You sure? Yeah. Moms are tough. Right. It's the last one, boss. All right, last one. Somebody take it. Push comes to shove, keep him safe. Bang. 
first impression of snow? All talk. <clears throat> All right, lay low and you'll be fine. We'll clear out the area. We're going home together! Come on! Everybody up! Right! New recruits! On me! Come on. Time to go, kiddo. <laughs> Losing the Psycom, you hear me? This'll be a piece. This is the thing you would have seen kick ass earlier had I been looking in the right direction. been a very difficult battle.
Get him home. Please. Hold on! It's an outlaw massacre. Those people won't even live long enough to die on pulse. That was the idea. What? Sanctum logic. They conjured up the courage to eliminate a threat. I mean, why carry the danger all the way to pulse? Why not just stamp it out here? Execution, masquerading as exile. That's all the purge ever was. <sighs> Relocation to Pulse. How does the government get away with pulling crap like that? And you, you knew this was gonna happen? The purge was Psycom. Private Sanctum troops, not the Guardian Corps. Psycom. Guardian Corps. Soldiers are soldiers, aren't they? Pulse Foul C and their Lassie are enemies of the state. Tell a soldier to kill an enemy, and you really think it's gonna matter what uniform he's wearing? Might have mattered to that one. Couldn't shoot. Got himself shot instead. How about you? Hmm? Or to say shoot? You pull the trigger? Fine. Forget I asked. Hoping to get polymer emulsion from him. I get digital circuit from pretty much anywhere.
It's too much, isn't it? Face it later. Ciao! <laughs> hey, wait! You said it made you happy when I smiled, didn't you? But really, I was afraid. I was always afraid. So, how do you figure that post file scene is different from the Sanctums? <laughs> All things being equal, I just as soon keep on. Time to jump. Hey, hey! Hey, hang on! What about the others? They didn't die. They couldn't have died. Of course not. Hey, get a grip, man! What's wrong with you? Me that catch. What are you doing? So, what are you afraid of, huh? You're supposed to be the hero. <laughs> She's waiting there, ain't she? Your lovely bride to be. Isn't it about time you picked her up? our ride <laughs> now you're talking prime example of missable enemies these flying things this is our only chance we've got no information about them got the drops anyway.
is good. We seem to have all the enemies. Massive object is transported through the sky over the hanging edge. The object is the Pulse Vestige, a lower world artifact that had been nothing more than a bottom landmark. Two days ago it was discovered that the Vestige housed a dormant Pulse Falci. The Falci had slumbered undisturbed on the outskirts of a cocoon city for centuries. The Sanctum decrees that the presence of the Pulse Entity and its corrupting magics have tainted the entire population of the city and orders the purge. For different reasons, Lightning and Saz now make their way towards the very being that was the catalyst for so much tragedy. Snow, meanwhile, is crushed by feelings of guilt after many die under his command. He only emerges from his gloom when Godot reminds him that Falci is holding a certain young lady captive, who needs her hero now more than ever. Falci are in existence beyond human comprehension, possessed of incredible magic power. The ones responsible for Cocoon's construction are protectors of humanity, but there are others of their kind as well, the Falci who dwell on Pulse and name themselves enemies of Cocoon. Humans who encounter Pulse Falci are cursed, being turned to the sea and ordered to destroy Cocoon. It is for this reason that most ordinary citizens support the Purge. Anyone who may have come into contact with one of these Falci represents a dire threat. Sanctum has developed a vast arsenal of weaponry to defend against constant threat of Pulse, and these living weapons are one of the many fruits the research has borne. Ordinary cocoon wildlife transformed into efficient killing machinery through selective breeding, intense training, and physical augmentation. Bioweapons retain all the raw power and feral fury of their natural counterparts, while also obeying the commands of their handlers with unwavering loyalty. Antimatter manipulation principle forms the foundation of the variety of technical technological wonders, enabling phenomena ranging from phase space interference to the manipulation of gravitational force. Humans ordinarily lack the means to wield magic, but through the use of mana drives, another product in, of the principle, it is possible to synthesize its effects. So it's technology that fakes magic, basically. A lot of components. Get out! Don't go rushing in on your own. Before we advance, I just want to make absolutely certain I've got all the stuff I can get. So these are just potions of Phoenix Downs from these guys. Credit chip I could have done with, but there's nowhere I can fight another one of them, I don't think. I'm sure I'll get plenty of credit trips later in the game. It's a real shame about that polymer emulsion, but again, I can't do anything about that at the moment. Wicked Fang and Chipped Fang, I think I've got. Yep, I've got both of them. So, I've got everything I can get. 
I don't have to backtrack. Say everything I can get. I could have been lucky with the uh, polymer That's emulsion. But... Sound. Where's the soul? Hey, Godot. Yeah? If you don't know who you've got to save, you just protect them all, right? <laughs> Something on your mind? You got plenty of time for thinking on the way, hero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swing by the vestige. Keep the kids out of trouble. You got it. Say hi to the missus for me. <laughs> you go skirt chasing, I take care of the kids. Some husband. <laughs> Dinner's on me. Better be home cooking. When's the wedding, <laughs> lover boy? <laughs> well, don't worry, none of you are invited. We're still going. Hey, you serious? What about me? Catch you later. Snow still cannot shake its feelings of guilt. Despite his efforts to protect the purge deportees from the Sanctum forces, many have fallen. The death of one woman in particular haunts his thoughts, a mother fighting for the sake of her son, who gave her life to save Snow. In the moments before her death, the woman begged the leader of Nora to take care of her child, but slipped from Snow's grasp without revealing the boy's identity. With Godot's help, Snow breaks out of his depression. He figures that if he goes ahead and protects everyone, then the woman's son will be saved as well. After checking to see if all the children are safe, Snow leaves the, one, the waning battle to his fellow Nora members and sets off with new determination towards the vestige. His fiancée is still held captive by the pulse foul sea. A boy watches him leave, eyes filled with rage and loathing. To his grief-stricken mind, Snow is responsible for his mother's death.
Tell him. It's just that. Uh... Say, you know how to fly this? Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> uh, 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 In you go. Uh, 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 uh. That way. Uh, no, no. Huh? If we go in there, that thing could... It could make us Lassie. Uh, this is... I don't think I can... You can do it. Uh, what are you two doing? Uh, here we go. Uh-oh. Uh, 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 our future and our fate. And that is the end of chapter one. Everybody on their way to the Pulse Fell Seas Vestige. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in chapter two. Bye!